Well, here's another middle of the week video. Fella just gave me this old end generator. One thing I know about it, it's a 4,000 watt. And he said it's got carburetor issues from a long time ago. So let's see if we can get it running. I really don't know uh, how long it's been sitting up. It was in his basement and we dug it out a little while ago. Um, it's liable been in there 15, 20, 25 years, no telling. Anyway, I'm gonna pull the carburetor off first and we'll go into it and see what's going on there. And then it's got a lot of wires right here that something used to be bolted here. I ain't got a clue what they're for. And what's real good is the model number about half the number's been scratched off. So, I'm not sure I can even find a print to figure out what all these are for. But hey, let's get started anyway. Daddy had an old end generator I got running all probably four years ago. And it was pretty simple. This one here, it's got some extra stuff. There's something on the exhaust right here. I don't know what this is right there. This right here, uh, it's tied to the governor some kind of way. I have no clue what that stuff is. But I ain't gonna worry about that right now. I wanna get that carburetor off and see what's going on with it. Alrighty, in order to get this carburetor off, I gotta take this off. That's some type of PCV. Uh, I gotta take this off, I gotta take this off. Then I don't know after that. So let me get some school drivers and take some of this stuff off. All right, let's get this little feller here off first. Come here. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Get this little feller out of the way. I wonder if that's got something to do with the ignition. I'll have to investigate that a little further. Yes, it does, look at here. See this right here? That right there runs off the cam down in there. That's what opens and closes the points. So the points are in here. Y'all know what? This is stupid. This is just stupid. I've got to take this intake off just to get the cover off because the bolts come from the bottom. That is stupid. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to leave the bowl in the base and we're going to take the top of it off. Alright. Ooh. Well. I believe I can clean it with that still in there. Yeah. Well, here's the bad thing. Other than that carb cleaner really burning that scrape place right there. Ouch. Uh, I don't know where these holes go to. I really need to take this carburetor off. Well, there ain't but two bolts, so I guess let's go ahead and take it off. Oh, yeah. Man, that was tight. Ooh. Oops, got a sprain, got a sprain. Oops, got a wire, got a little wire. All right, let's get the whole carburetor off. Both of those were really, really loose. That might have been the problem. Maybe had a vacuum leak right there at the base of the carburetor. Interesting. Let's go inside and take this apart and see what we got going on. Well, this is a really simple carburetor. There's your main needle. There's your idle needle. And that's it. There's the main uh, jet, I guess you could say. It sprays in four different directions. It's nothing is stopped up. So I'm gonna say the issue was the carburetor was just loose on the intake. It probably had a real bad vacuum leak. So let's put it back together, put it on the uh, motor, and then I guess we need to work on points and then it'll tell you what else. Well, here is the gasket. 
Uh, I really think that carburetor was loose, and that's probably what the issue was. So let's just go ahead and make a new gasket, and then we'll put it all back together. That may be all it needs. All right, I got me a new gasket made, and it seems to fit pretty good. So let's go ahead and put the carver roster back on. Uh, which way did it go? Goes like this. Goes like this. Well, I know there's a hole there. What the devil? Oh, it's on another side. <laughs> Where did it go? Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put a little bit of RTMV on them intake gaskets. They look a little rough. Alright. Hmm. Where's the bolt? Let me get a bolt over here. Oh, wait a minute. i got to get this little fella out of the way. What if we take this hanger off here? I don't think we need that on there. I don't know why it's on there. All right, let's try this again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The exhaust gasket is broke, so probably going to have an exhaust leak, but I don't really care at the moment. I just want to hear it run. All right, here we go. Wonder what the torque sequence is on this. Let's put this little feather back on. Now let's look at these uh, points while I got this thing off. They're actually not bad. I'm gonna file them anyway, but they're not they're not bad. All right, we'll put this back together. Uh oh, something fell. What the devil did this come off of? Huh? I don't know. Well, that's not very good. Well, if it's necessary, I guess we'll find out in a little while. All right, let me put these points back together, and then we'll check and see if we got any sparkages. Oh. Guess where that came from? Right there. It's necessary. Ah, all right. Now, I'm going to pull the plug. And then, I don't know where the starter is. This wire goes into here. Is this a starter also, a generator and a starter? I don't know. So I'm going to hook battery cable here and in the ground somewhere, and maybe that'll be all I need. Well, I got my battery hooked up, but nothing happens like this. Nothing happens, so I don't know what to do right now. I guess I'm going to have to go find a book on it so I know what I'm dealing with. Alrighty, I think I may have figured out why it won't turn over. See these cables right here? I just got them out of the basement there. And I assumed red went to red. It doesn't. Red goes to black. So let's hook it up like that and it might actually turn over now. <laughs> Alright, I got my trusty coat hanger. Let's see. I don't know. Let's just try it right here. Alright, that's working the solenoid. What does this do? Nothing. What if we do this right here? Hmm. Acts like we ain't got enough power. But I used the battery this size to start that other one and it was it's a bigger generator, I believe. So let me see. It ain't stuck. So let's try that again. Let's see what happens. Oh, look here. It tried. 
it that's what it is it's probably this little cable so yeah that that's warm yeah that's what it is let me get a little bigger uh cable if i can find one i don't think i got one oh yeah that's really really warm all right i went and got the big jumper cables i don't really like using them because as you can see well they got a lot of naked spots and that's not real good but it's gonna have to do for now All right, Mr. Coat Hanger, let's try it one more time. Oh, look at there. All right, let me pull this plug out. And uh, we'll check see if we got sparks. All right, let's see if we got any sparkages. No sparkages, but see all this right here? That's probably has to be hooked up uh, I don't know where um, I guess we could put battery voltage right to the coal uh, I'll tell you what let me see if I can figure out what model this is and get a electrical print and let's wire this thing up like it's supposed to be well it's the next day and upon further research uh, I believe this is a CCK model. They seem to be fairly common, but I don't know. I'm not a generator expert. I'm not an expert on anything. So if you're expecting that, well, <laughs> you're going to be disappointed. Anyway, I think most of these older ones are wired up pretty much the same. And your power is going to come off your solenoids, like a Chevrolet or anything else. And uh, so it'll be on this wire here. Well, here's your fused wire, so I'm assuming... That is going to be the power feed up here to where the control used to be. So what I'm going to do is get the old metry out and start ohming these wires out, you know, from here to here, make sure that's what I think it is. And then, then I need to go from here to over to the coal and where else? That's pretty much it, I guess. Oh, wait a minute. You got an electric fuel pump. Need to find that wire. It's just a matter of uh, ohming out the wires and, you know, finding which ones I need. So let me get that done. All right, here is the power to here. Come here, little fella. There's there. Exactly as I suspected. The fused wire is the hot coming from the solenoid. Now, I need to find the coil wire. So, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I am, it's just hotter than the pits of hail. I'm about to burn up. Good grief, it's hot. Well, I'm really confused at this point. Let me see. This wire is going over here. What I need to do, I guess, let's get this out of the way here. And I need to take the wires off that coal, I reckon. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do that. You'll have to excuse the noise because it's really, really hot out here. So I plug my big old fan in. All right, I got the wires isolated off the coil now. Let's just see. Well, I'm thoroughly confused. How can it check two all? That's good. That is the spark car wire. So now we have coil, our car. Y'all remember this. That's hot going to everything. Uh, I believe that's all we need to get it running. Let's see. So what I've got to do, this is hot. I'm gonna have a push button and then a toggle switch. Push button be for the starter, toggle will be ignition on and off. Oh and uh Oh, I forgot. Let's find a fuel pump wire. Right there. Right there. That's the fuel pump. Alrighty, here's my makeshift uh, control center. I decided to use the terminal strip because I don't want to cut these wires because I'm going to try to find the original uh, control center eventually. So I just got a, a push button for the starter. 
and here's a little rocker switch for the ignition and fuel pump these wires here they may possibly go down here to the generator i'm afraid they're gonna knock a crap out of me so i went ahead and taped them up uh anyway let me hook a battery up and let's see if we're getting any spark right there all righty let's turn the switch on hit the start car see if we're getting any spark no sparky spark all righty upon further investigation I was missing a screw in this terminal strip. Well, that jumper wasn't making contact. Well, we got it now, so let's try it one more time. Tighten. Well, it's getting spark, but it is really, really weak. Let me try it again. Now I'm not getting any spark and the star is barely turning over, so I'm going to put that battery on the charger for a little while and that may help it out. Let's try that. Alright, now that I got the battery charged up, let's see if we're getting any better spark. Not really. Not really. But it is consistent, so I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to uh, rig up a fuel tank and we're going to see if this thing will fire up. Alrighty, I got me a fuel line running right there. Got my gasoline tank right here. I'm going to turn the switch on to see if the tone of that uh, pump changes and that'll let us know if it's pumping or not. Yep, there she goes. Oh yeah, she's pumping fuel now. Well, let me reposition this camera because there's a blower right here and it's probably below y'all that way. So I'm going to set you on the other side and we'll see if it start. Let me check it Earl before I start it up. It's got some on the dipstick, so it's probably all right. It's leaning going downhill, so it'll be all right. Fire in the hole. <laughs> y'all think about that <laughs> she fired right up now i think i got to get in here that says ac output and i'm gonna wire me a plug right there and we'll see if it'll run something well there's only two well four wires they're tied together so i'm gonna fire it back up put a meter right here and uh, let's see what it's getting it says on the nameplate 120 and 240 uh I don't know if you had to wire it up different to get the 240 or if it's, you know, automatic. Let's just put a meter on it and see. All right, let's fire it up again. <laughs> we are getting 140 voltages. Well, I got me an outlet wired up. I got all the intake hoses and PCBs hooked back up. So I'm gonna fire it up. I got this extension cord right over here. We're gonna plug this big fan up. I might go get a grinder, see if it'll grind too. Alrighty, let's give it the old try. As you can see 
it'll run a fan and a grinder at the same time. But we've got an issue. Oh, uh, see this oil right here? It's coming out of this fan housing. The only thing I can think of is there's a seal in there that's uh, leaking. So uh may have to pull this cover and that fan off and, and see what we can find. Well, just look at all that oil, oil from sitting overnight. That's quite a bit of oil. Just from no, you know, we didn't run it five minutes. So let's go ahead and get this cover off and see what kind of seal we got this leaking. Yeah, got a earl down in there. My goodness. I don't know how this comes off. I've never, I've never done this before. Oh, there it goes. Come on. Well, there it is. There's the flywheel slash fan, and where is it leaking? I don't know. There's really no obvious leak. No, sir, there ain't no obvious leak at all. Tell you what, if it's leaking that bad, let's run it for just a minute with the covers off and see if we can see where it's leaking from. All right, here we go. I'm assuming that's an oil sending unit. Uh, loses oil pressure, probably shuts it down. It was leaking pretty good. Well, you can see right there. Leaked that in what, 10 seconds? And I think, I don't think it's the threads. I think it's leaking right here. So I'll have to see if I can find a, a new sending unit. Just so you know, a 27 millimeter socket is what you need to get that oil sending unit on. And there it is. I wonder if a small block Chevrolet oil sending unit might work. All right, I'll put an eighth inch pipe plug in there for the time being. Uh, it'll be fine like that because I don't even have that hooked up, you know, to all the stuff. Anyway, I'm pretty sure small block Chevrolet oil sending unit for a light will work. So that's probably what I'm going to get. They're $9 at uh, O'Reilly. And anyway, I'm going to start scraping and cleaning all this old gunk off. Because I can put this cover back on. All I got to do is take this side cover off to get to that oil pressure sending unit. So that's what I'm going to do. Clean it up, put all it back together. And we might run it a little bit longer. And Miss Daisy has come over to help. I don't know how much help she can be, but she's going to help us. Come here, girl. Come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I give it a quick cleaning, which means I gave minimal effort because I despise cleaning. So, I think we're going to fire it up, let it run a little longer, and might hook that fan up, let it run it for a while. glad we got the old girl running and generating again i believe this makes number six generator that i have now well actually most of them are uh generators that daddy acquired over the years but anyway there it is glad we got it running just out of curiosity i got my little kilowatt meter here i'm gonna plug it in plug it in right there and fire it up and let's just see what kind of cycles this thing is getting see how close it is to 60. Well, as you saw, that was 70 cycles a second. That ain't going to work. It's supposed to be 60. 
that's why we got 144 volts also so i'm gonna get right here do a little adjusting on that governor and then we'll see if we can get it down to 60. That's better than it was. Uh, I couldn't get 60 hertz. It would either do 59 or 61. So I chose to stay on 59. Uh, it'll be all right. But wait, there's more. I told y'all there's about six of these generators running around here. This is another Onan 3000 watt. I've been wanting to get it running for a while because I'm fixing to do a little experimentating with it. I ain't gonna tell you what yet, but if it works out, it's gonna be pretty cool, pretty interesting. But that'll be a few months down the road probably. But I figure since I'm in the mood of uh, getting generators going, we might as well do this one too. So I think what I'm gonna do, hopefully this one won't be too difficult. I'm gonna pull the bowl, see what it looks like. Maybe shoot some carb cleaner in the holes. Uh, Fill it with gas, put a plug in it, and see if it'll start. Well, there ain't hardly nothing in it. A little bit of flaky stuff, that's about it. I'm gonna say it's probably good. So let's just put the bowl back on it, put some gasoline in it, and uh, we'll see if it'll start. All right, let's check the oil real quick. Oh, she's full. That oil's probably 20 years old, but it'll be fine. Fine and dandily. Let me find a sparking plug. I think I'll steal one off this tiller over here. The tiller that I stole this spark plug from, I rebuilt it last year, give it a re-ring. And it's still gonna start, it's, I think it's carbureted. So, I get this one running, we might, uh, might rebuild the carburetor on it, cause I got a kit for it. Let's just get everything running. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's take this plug back out. And we'll see if we get spark putting the cart before the horse come out of there. Well, I will be, I just screwed you in the hand, I think. Where is the, where's the kill switch? I don't see a kill switch anywhere. Well, apparently there's no kill switch. All right, well, let's pull this. I hear it, but I don't see it. Let me see. Oh yeah, we get the spark. We getting the sparky spark. We get this in, put some gasoline in it. We'll give her the old try. I guess I need to put a wire tie around this one, yank it off to kill it. Let me do that. Kill switch mod complete. Now let me get some gasoline real quick. Oh, look, I think we have a, oh, we have a hole. Crap, crappity crap. Well, let me pinch that line off. Well, I don't have another bowl, I don't think. I'll have to look, maybe I'll do. Well, out of all the small engines around this place, and there's several, out of one of them has a carburetor bowl this height. They're all too tall, and the diameter's a little bit smaller. So, I did the next best thing. I got me some RT and V, put it on inside and outside. I'm gonna let it set for a little bit, and then we'll put it on and see if it'll run. All right, it's semi-dry. Let's put it on and see what happens. All right, I got the bowl back on. RT and V is set up pretty good, so let us see if that fixed the leak. It appears that that fixed the leak, so. Let's turn the choke on, see if it starts.
Alrighty then. Well, that thing is really, really loud. I gotta get a muffler for it sometime. I'm glad we got it running though. That's two we got running this video. I got two more, I think, in the barn right out there. One of them's an old Lister diesel. Might have to get it running sometime. But uh, anyway, like I said, this one here, I've been wanting to get it running for a while because there's some experimentating I'm gonna do. I'm not telling you, so don't even ask. You may have to wait till this fall, winter. I don't know, but you'll see this one again. Well, that'll do it for this middle of the week video. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, peace.